Howdy folks, Greyhawk 4x4 coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer, and it is time for another gaming vlog. Let's roll. So this gaming vlog is uh, going to be a little bit of a uh, catch up for uh, the last probably month or so, I think, since I've done the last one. And um, we also had a special guest here in the, the tavern uh, at our regular D&D game. So uh, to start off, uh, I need to give a little recap on uh, where we're at in, uh, in our campaign. Uh, for those of you that are new to the program, we are running a first edition Greyhawk campaign back here. And the current group of players who the group started out being known as the Nomads of Deavers have changed their their name several times in an effort to obscure their real identities and, and, and kind of throw misinformation out there because there's a group that is a very powerful group that has been uh, looking for them because they have information that people that get that information need to be eliminated. This this group does not want any possibility of of a, any information about their their uh, existence to leak out. So anybody that kind of is able to gather that information, that group known as the Watchers, um, basically wants to eliminate them so they can't spread that information. Uh, and just for ease of uh, understanding, you can equate the Watchers uh, as you would a modern-day organized crime group, such as the Mafia or something like that. Um, basically, they control the cr amount of crime that is sanctioned and so forth within a certain part of the realm of... Uh, the Flaness, which is in Greyhawk, of course, and uh, the they're very secret, extremely secretive. Uh, most people just know them as sort of a boogeyman. In the modern day, you would you know kind of like we think about the Illuminati and those types of groups that we're not even sure if they really exist. They're kind of a boogeyman type thing, and that's what most folks in the realm think of the Watchers. You know, so. That is uh, to get you kind of caught up on what was happening uh, before this last session. So now we're going to go back to when I first ran this campaign about 20 years ago in California with our friends there. They were a group that ran through a lot of what this new group is running through. Um, and in game time, it would it's a difference of about three years uh, but that group was known as the seekers the first group that I ran through this campaign and what I did is all the members of the seekers all those player characters are now NPCs in my in my current iteration so our players now the nomads of Devers, for for lack of a better term uh, have been interacting with all of the people all of the characters that were played by players the first time around and so what we did this time uh, this last session was uh, we had a visitor here my buddy Chris from California who was a member of the Seekers who played one of those characters uh, called Seldic and uh, in addition to that my wife uh, used to play way back then and she plays a character named Clarice uh, and both of them Seldic and Clarice have been NPCs in the current iteration of this campaign so our current players have been interacting with them and so forth Seldic works at the training hall training uh, ranger types uh, you know uh, when it comes to ranged combat and that type of thing and Clarice is because she's a paladin she works at the temple um, and so they've been interacting with them but now this uh, on this this last week when we all got together uh, they got to play their characters again so basically what I did was this is now no longer two separate campaigns I basically just um, managed to uh, create continuity and basically 
it's just been one long 20-year campaign. There was just a big break in the middle. But the persistent world kept going. I have basically um, filled in the blanks as to what happened during those three years of game time um, in what was actually about 20 years in real lifetime. Um, and so now they, I had to come up with a way for the members of the Seekers, Chris and my wife, uh, to adventure for one night and one night only, because he was only in town for one week, um, uh, and find some way for them to kind of have an adventure that we could do in, in one night's, you know, one-off kind of. So what I did was our current players, uh, the Nomads, were in the Temple of Elemental Evil. That's where they were at. And I basically used a magic mouse spell to basically tell them, hey, something horrible has happened in Deaver's you need to get back immediately. And we forewent the normal, you know, travel, checking for random monster encounters, etc., cetera, et cetera, And I just said, okay, you're able to make it back to Deavers. So I get them back to Deavers, and they see that the training hall, where Seldic works, uh, has been burned to the ground. And they have to investigate as to what happened. And it becomes very obvious very uh, very soon that the, the owner of the, the training hall, Drac, who is an NPC that both the Seekers and the Nomads have both been utilizing the whole time throughout the 20-year history of this campaign. Um, he basically says, oh, well, they kept, you know, they kept me alive uh, to give you guys a message that, that they know who you are, they know you're still around, and uh, that they wanted to send a message to anybody who gives aid to the Nomads, as they were once called, um, that this is what you can expect to happen to you. And they burned down this hall. They killed everybody inside, except for Sel Selvik managed to escape, of course. And so that set up for uh, them to want to get some revenge upon whoever did this. They know it's the Watchers, but they, they also got a piece of information from the local, from the Thieves Guild, who one of our players is a member of, um, who said that one of their operatives was out and saw the people who did it escape out into the woods and they followed them. So now they not only have information from Drax, the, the message that was left with him, but they also have a trail to follow. And of course, Seldick, not knowing, you know, he knows the current players, the nomads, from just training them from time to time and so forth. And having, he also has a, an affair with the uh, dwarven barbarian, female barbarian, of course. Um, because he's a dwarf as well, but other than that, um, uh, he doesn't know the rest of them that well, and Seldic doesn't know any of them very well at all. So Seldic, of course, insists that somebody that he trusts, Clarice, must go with the group if he's going to go. And so that set it up for them all, the, the newer players, as well as these two veteran players from uh, way back when, to all go off and try and find who did this. And sure enough, they find the safe house that I created, and uh, they infiltrate the safe house. But of course, they there was a um, uh, an early warning system set up by the bad guys, um, which our group managed to set off. And there were escape tunnels from the safe house that they all utilized. There was four of them, and they all had four secret doors that went to tunnels, and they all went in separate directions. So our group decided uh, which one, which tunnel they were going to follow, and they followed one, and they managed to find one of the assailants had exited, you know, quite a ways down, exited up, you know, uh, through a hatch, and they followed it, and they had a couple rangers in their party, one being Celtic, and they were able to find out that there was a crevasse uh, in the side of a like a uh, granite, you know, a hillside, and they assumed he went in there, and that's exactly what he did. They found a small cave in there, and he was in there, and they confronted him, and what I had done is, there is an accessory called the Rogue's Gallery. There was an earlier edition of it for first edition, and then there was a second edition, um, and I used the second edition one because um, it was much easier they're loose leaf pages, so I could actually take them out, and I could scan them, and then print them, 
so that I could scribble on them without actually scribbling on my collectible. So that's exactly what I did. I scanned these, and then I could write on them. As a matter of fact, I kept track of hit points and everything. And so the first guy they found was this uh, Rogan Beefbone, a uh, dwarf bounty hunter. And they get in, you know, they manage to subdue, you know, they, it's, it, they, they fight for a while, and uh, they manage to get him subdued, and then, you know, he spills the beans that, you know, he was just hired by a crazy magic user, or not necessarily a crazy magic user, but an unusual magic user that um, hired him for quite a bit of gold, um, platinum to be exact. And um, so they went back to the, uh, he convinced them to let him go once he gave up all the information that he had. Um, they let him go, and then they go back um, to the safe house to try to find this magic user, so they took another tunnel, and luckily they did take the right tunnel, and they come up again and through a hatch, but this magic user was waiting for them, they expected someone might follow, and the first one up, our other ranger from our newer group, uh, came up, and she was ready, and she lightning bolted his ass, and she killed him, I mean, he was done, roasted, and, uh, the rest of the group comes up and they're having, they're struggling with her. She's high level. And matter of fact, she's, uh, right here. Karasis is her name. And she, uh, she's a badass. So they're struggling with her, but, but our one little, uh, assassin, our gnome assassin slash illusionist dual class character, um, he had had our uh, Meslo NPC, another wizard, who had been sending them out trying to find unusual body parts from monsters and creatures to bring back for his experiments. He had successfully created a scroll uh, of um, sphincter control, if I remember correctly. That's what we named it. And basically what this does is... It, uh, if it's uttered, if it's used, the person who's the victim of the, of the spell loses all bowel control instantly. Just bowels evacuated on the spot. And so our gnome friend, he, uh, one of our gnome friends, we also have a druid in the party who's a gnome, um, he, uh, he spoke, he used the scroll, and this is the, just so you know what the spell, uh, the vocal element is it is balatorium evacutus expeditum <laughs> and I came up with that I'm proud to say um, so she of course loses this wizard this magic user loses all bowel control and of course it stuns her because imagine that happening to you in the middle of a fight you know not to mention there would be cramping involved as well um, and it incapacitates her just long enough for them to take her down. And they actually were trying to non-lethally take her down because they wanted to get information, but they killed her. Um, so they now have a dead ranger in their party and this dead magic user, which they had to get back to town because they wanted to revive both of them. One, of course, their party member. And number two, uh, no pun intended, they wanted to get the magic user rest so they could... Uh, they could interview her. So they managed to get back down and they managed to do that. And the interesting part of the story is that Karis is here. She was indeed, uh, they charmed her or something to get the truth out of her. She was uh, approached by a member of the Watchers and she was hired to recruit some people to do this job, burning down this training hall and so forth. But what she was promised was, this is actually not a female. This is a male magic user who has a cursed item on, a girdle of femininity, which changed his gender to female. Of course, against his will, his, against his wishes, but it's cursed. So he can't get it off. He's never been able to get it off. He's tried everything. He's a magic user. He's sought out other magic users. Can't get it off. Tried to pry it off. Nothing works. And they promised that they could get it off for him slash her uh, to put him back the way he wishes to be uh, if he carried he or she carried out this job. 
that so that is the motivator right there. It wasn't even gold. It was just to get that stupid girdle off. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of where I mean we made it to that point. Uh, they found out who had done it. They enacted you know some revenge. They got some information, but that was where, basically where we had to stop for the night. But basically, what we accomplished was we created synergy and continuity between the first iteration that I ran. 20 years ago and now, and now we have a, basically a continuing campaign, persistent world campaign that has lasted for like 20 years with a big break in between. Um, so now when they are dealing with these two particular NPCs, uh, Clarice and Seldic, they actually know a little bit more because they've actually they've actually played with the players that, that ran those characters. I'd like to do it with all the rest of the original Seekers if we could get everybody here. Maybe that will happen at some point. I don't know. But anyway, so that is what is happening in my campaign. They still are current. They still have to go back and finish the Temple of Elemental Evil and so forth. But all these side uh, threads are, go are going on at the, in the meantime. And we're dealing with the Watchers. And the so, of course, now they know that the Watchers you know, are much more of a threat than they maybe uh, believed earlier. So, uh, I'm tired of talking. Um... If you guys have any questions, you can go back at my previous gaming vlogs, and they're in chronological order. If you have questions about the campaign to, to, to get caught up to this point, but I think I did a pretty good job with the synopsis. Um, anyway, uh, while my buddy was here, we also went to Comic-Con, Salt Lake Comic-Con. So I'm going to do a separate video about that. I'm going to do a, a review of it, and then I'm going to post pictures. The pictures, I'm going to put those on my... Facebook page, Greyhawk 4x4 Facebook page, if you want to see the pictures from the con, the cosplay and all that stuff, that's where you'll find those. And uh, with that, until next time, we'll catch you guys on the flip side.